Hey everyone, this is Paul. Welcome to part 13 in how to create a hash table project in C++. In this tutorial I'm going to begin creating a remove item function so that way we can remove an item from our hash table. So right now I'm in the hash.h file and I'm in the public section of the hash class definition and I'm going to just create a new prototype for this function that we're about to write and I'll give it a void return type since it doesn't need to return anything and then I'll just go ahead and call this function remove item because that's what it's going to do and we'll go ahead and pass in a string variable into this function and we'll go ahead and call that string variable name and then we'll end our prototype with a semicolon so what the remove item function will do is we'll pass in the name of a person that we want to remove from our hash table and if there's an item inside of our hash table that contains that name that we're passing in then it will remove that item from the hash table and if the name of that person is not contained in the hash table then the remove item function will tell us that that person was not found in the hash table so that's what the remove item function is going to do let's go ahead and copy this now and then we'll go to our hash.cpp file and we'll go ahead and paste it right here right below our definition for our hash function and what we're going to do first is we'll just go ahead and get rid of this semicolon here and then we need to let our uh, program know that we're defining this from the hash class so we'll type in hash colon colon right there to do that and then we'll do an opening and closing curly brace and we'll go ahead and define the remove item function inside of these curly braces so let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit so we got a little bit more room on the screen here so inside of the remove item function the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an integer variable and we'll go ahead and call that integer variable index and then we'll make that equal to the hash value of the name that we're passing into the remove item function so the first thing the remove item function does is it creates this integer variable that we're going to call index and it takes the name of the person that we passed in and it takes that name it passes that into the hash function that we wrote just up above the hash function computes the bucket number that that name would be stored in and it places that value in index so now we know what bucket we need to look into to see if we can find this name to remove it and that bucket number is stored in the variable index now so now that we've got that taken care of let's go ahead and create three item pointers so to create an item pointer I'm just going to type item star and then the first item pointer I'll just call del ptr for delete pointer and then the second item pointer that I create I'm just going to call that one p1 and that's just kind of a generic name for pointer one and then I'll create a third item pointer and I'll just go ahead and call this one p2 for pointer two so the way that we're going to remove an item from the hash table kind of depends on where that item is located in the hash table so for this video I'm just going to go ahead and do an outline of how we're going to go ahead and solve this problem of deleting an item from the hash table so we're going to separate this into a bunch of cases and then I'll go ahead and code those cases in the next few videos so the first case I'll just go ahead and call this case 0 and I guess I'll go ahead and uncomment this for the moment so you can kind of see what's happening here and I'll comment that out before the video is over so case 0 is going to be the case where the bucket that we're looking into is empty there's not any information in that bucket it doesn't contain any items so we know what bucket to look into because the bucket that we need to look into is stored in this index variable so we go ahead and look in the bucket that's identified by this index variable and case 0 will be the case where we've looked in that bucket and it doesn't contain any items so that will be case 0 so let's go ahead and move on to case 1 so case one is going to be the case where there's only one item in the bucket that we're looking into and that item has a matching name so I'll put only one item contained in bucket and that item has matching name so that's going to be case one and so we'll go ahead and write some code for that so now the next case we're going to consider I'll just call this one case two and so case two is going to be that there's a match in the very first item in the bucket but there's additional items in the bucket as well so I guess I'll put match is located in the first 
item in the bucket, but there are more items in the bucket. So that will be case two. And then we'll do case three for the next one. So I'll type in case three. And I'll go ahead and comment all this out before I'm done. I just think it shows up better in the black here. So case three is going to be the case where the bucket does contain some items, but the first item is not a match. So we'll say the bucket contains items, but first item is not a match. So that's what we'll do for case three, and we'll do two subcases underneath case three as well. So we're going to call case 3.1 the case where we've looked through all the items in the bucket and there's no match. So case, we'll call it 3.2, will be the case where we met the conditions for case three. The bucket contains items, but the first item in the bucket is not a match. But case 3.2 will be the case where we do find a match in the additional items that are in the bucket we're looking into. So we'll put match is found. So this is how I'm going to write the code for the remove item function. We're finding the bucket where that item would be located in the hash table if it is located in the hash table at all. Then we go ahead and create three item pointers that will help us kind of do some work. And then we look at these different cases. So case zero is going to be the case where we're looking into the bucket and the bucket is empty. Now the way I set up the hash table for this project, each bucket does contain one item, but initially that item's default value has a string of empty. So if all we have is one item and it has a default value of empty for its name and drink variable, then we're going to consider that that falls under case zero. Case one is going to be the case where only one item is contained in the bucket and that item has a matching name. Case two is going to be the case where our match is located in the first item, but the bucket also contains additional items. Case three would be the case where the bucket contains more than one item, but the first item is not a match. And then the subcategories of case three would be the case where the additional items either did not have a match or the additional items in the bucket do have a match. So let's go ahead and just comment this out now. And we'll go ahead and use these as reference points for writing code for uh, the next tutorial. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. You guys have an excellent day and stay tuned for the next few tutorials and I'll go ahead and write the code for each of these cases and we'll go ahead and create a remove item function for our hash table project. So thanks for watching and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.